Inside Michigan Footballs presented by Meyer. Hi again, friends, and welcome to another edition of Inside Michigan Football. Doug Karsh alongside the captain, John Jansen. Michigan wins 52 to 7 over Indiana. After a slow start, boy, did they answer the bell. Well, they did. And I mean, 52 unanswered uh, points. When you have that ability to respond, whether it's in touchdown drives, interceptions, sacks, coming out at halftime, like there's so much that went well for Michigan after that first quarter. Well, let's go to the highlights and we pick it up with Indiana facing a third and 11 on their opening possession and Michigan mixes it up defensively. Yeah, I want to watch this here because you've got seven guys at the line of scrimmage and there are technically seven guys over here that can block, but when you put, put this many bit up, the communication offensively has to be perfect. If it's not, here's what happens is you've got a guy in Jalen Harrell that draws the attention of your running back. All of a sudden he's going to come up, but Jalen Harrell's going to drop back here in the protection what happens then is there's a miscommunication. They don't count out right. And then Makari Page comes out here and puts a hit on the quarterback. And it rushes the quarterback and it makes him throw an incomplete pass. And that's just one of the reasons why this defense, all the different looks, and it's going to come back to pay dividends here in just a little bit. All right, so Michigan, they went three and out on their first possession. And Indiana got something going, mostly quick passes, getting the ball out fast. Yeah, and it was, hey, they knew they weren't going to hold up in protection for four quarters, so they wanted to get the ball into the quarterback's hands, out of the quarterback's hands, quick runs as well. So Indiana drives into the Michigan red zone, and here they're facing a third and 11. Mikey Samristo gets the tip and Rod Moore the interception. A great play by Mikey Samristo, just getting his hand on the ball and tips and overthrows. You got to get those, and it's important for this team to be able to make those interceptions, force those turnovers. That was the fifth interception of Moore's career, but Michigan couldn't capitalize. Indiana, their ensuing possession, they go double pass. This is a former quarterback. This kid started at quarterback two years ago in the big house, connects for Indiana's lone touchdown. Yeah, and when the ball goes out there, secondary always has to be alert of what's going on. Jason Avant said this during the broadcast. When you see a wide receiver that far off the ball, catching a ball, you know that there's got to be something. Michigan's defensive backs got drawn up and beat over the top. So the Wolverines are down early, and this is a big play. It's third and 10. Michigan doesn't have a first down yet, and J.J. finds Colston Loveland for 12 yards. His ability to extend plays and then be able to find Colston Loveland here on the sideline, it was accurate and a nice catch by Colston. And then Blake Corum goes for 11 yards as he starts to get going. He is as elusive a running back as you're going to find in this country. All right. Same drive, second quarter now. Here's a pass from J.J. to Cornelius Johnson. This one came close to being picked off, but he threw it a little behind him, kept it away from the defensive back. He knew exactly where those defensive backs were, and when you could control what your receivers are doing by where you place the ball, it's, it's, it's a huge advantage knowing your quarterback has that awareness. Plus, as a receiver, it, again, it builds trust because you know he's not going to get you lit up. All right, Blake Corum comes in motion here. Looks like he's just jogging back to be in the backfield. And then they go snap it and a little pop pass to Blake to get Michigan knocking on the door. Any time that you can get the ball in Blake Corum's hands in different situations and in different scenarios and in different looks for the defense, it's going to give you an advantage. Well, that sets up Blake Corm for a one-yard touchdown run, and the game is tied at seven. Indiana puts something together. They're facing a third and two near midfield. Let's go to Jansen Vision. You know, I want you to remember what I just talked about in regards to Jalen Harrell going into the line of scrimmage and popping out. This time, I want you to watch big Kenneth Grant right here. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to draw the attention as a you know big man can do as he approaches the line of scrimmage. All right, he draws the attention of the guard. It's going to allow these guys to apply pressure, but then watch. I want you to watch him get back here. He gets in the passing lane. The ball is intended to come here. He's in the passing lane, and the ball <laughs> literally hits him in the face. Uh, it could have been another interception for the big fella. John said on the air, ball attacks, man. Uh, all right, so Michigan, they get the ball back. Here's a little dump off pass to Donovan Edwards. He's been very good in these situations. You get him on a linebacker. I'll take that. That's an advantage, Michigan. That's an advantage, Donovan Edwards, to be able to pick up yards. Also advantage when you know you have a free play. Indiana jumps off sides. J.J. finds... Tyler Morris for 23 yards here. Yeah, and again, hey, you scramble drill. You got to find those guys. Tyler Morris is deep, comes back, and is able to, to get a nice play. Speaking of Tyler Morris, here the flea flicker, and it's Tyler Morris over the middle for another good game. Yeah, and you know, there are so many different targets when you run a play like this. This one, it felt like it happened a little bit quicker, so you weren't able to go deep down the field, but you have, again, Tyler Morris 
for a nice pickup. Here's A.J. Barner, 18 yards against his former team. He was a Hoosier captain last year. You know that had to feel good, to, to be able to have success like that against your former team. All right, so Michigan's looking at a fourth and two. Jim Harbaugh decides to go for it. Let's go to Jansen Vision. And I asked him in the post game, and I said, hey, what is it that makes you decide to go for this? And his answer was number nine. And this is exactly why. When you have a play drawn up like this, you've got three eligible receivers over here. They're going to go in a number of different ways. Actually, A.J. Barner's going to come down here and block Colston Loveland. He's going to go a little bit deeper, and then Roman Wilson is going to come across, actually beat him over here to this sideline. Both guys are open as they cross the formation, but because you got number nine right there, he finds Roman Wilson in the back of the end zone, and I have no idea what the defense was doing, but they got all caught up in the wash, and it, it ended up being an, an easy catch for Roman Wilson. That gave Michigan a 14-7 to lead. Let's pick it up here. Indiana runs a little option. Ernest Hausman plays this very well. He plays it perfectly. He breaks down on the quarterback. He's in position. If the quarterback tosses it, he can go make a play. Decides not to, and he's right there to make, make a nice tackle. All right, let's pick it up here. Third and 16 for the Hoosiers. Mikey Sainristel in coverage does a great job. Yeah, Mikey Sandra still has done a great job all season long. Really, the only time we saw him get beat was last week against Minnesota. And this time, he's able to be in position to make a great play. All right, so Indiana has to punt. Tyler Morris has to back up and field this one running towards his own end zone. But what a great play. Guys making sure no blocks in the back. And then at the end, A.J. Barner buries a former teammate. I know. I should have used this one on Jansen Vision because I should have highlighted A.J. Barner. He did a great job, hands tight, driving his feet, and he not only buries a former teammate, but another former tight end that he was in a room with. I guarantee you there were a couple of sweet nothings set at the end of that one. <laughs> Meanwhile, old-timers may remember Jim Harbaugh doing this to Gerald White back at Iowa in 1985. J.J. finds Donovan Edwards with the flip pass. Coach Harbaugh loves the fact that J.J. is willing to go out there and try and make plays. This is one of those, you can't script this, you can't recreate this one. You just, hey, let a guy make plays, and he does, right down to the two-yard line. And right before the half, Blake Corum takes it in, and Michigan leads it 21-7 to at the break, knowing they're getting the ball to start the third quarter. Boy, this game flipped in a hurry. It did, and hey, you, you come out with a slow start in the first quarter, you score three touchdowns. You put the hammer down defensively going into halftime up 21-7. That's, that's great momentum knowing, like you just mentioned, ball out of halftime. All right, we'll have second half highlights when we continue here on Inside Michigan Football. Stuff happens, you know, it's football. Like, we're not always going to have the right hand in the right situation. So, you know, they brought it cover zero when we were in empty on the first drive, and, you know, we just didn't uh, execute well on the second drive. But that's not going to stop us. Just because we're having a bad start doesn't mean we're going to have a bad game. So, you know, every chance is another opportunity to get this team going. No panic, because if everyone starts panicking, that's when things go downhill. So just stick to what we do, you know, move the ball, and, uh, you know, maybe call some different plays, but at the end of the day, what, if we stick to what we normally do, you know, we'll be all right. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2023 Michigan football season and proud supporter of thousands of local sports teams across the Midwest. The word of the week that was just kind of, you know, roaming around Schembechler Hall was relentless. And I feel like, you know, scoring on those last eight drives really proved to that. And uh, I was happy we were able to execute on it. Doug Cars, John Jansen back on Inside Michigan Football. The Wolverines led it 21 to 7. They scored right before half and they got the ball to start the third quarter. And we pick up the highlights with the kick return and Samaj Morgan. This was a well blocked special teams play. It was well blocked and well executed. And Samaj Morgan has built trust with this coaching staff, not just as a pass catcher, but also as a return guy. Wolverines. J.J., the quarterback keeper, they're using him in the run game a lot more now. It's all about the decisions that he's making, the, the ability to the ball handling skills in the backfield, but also to escape the pocket. And he rushed the ball 10 times, and each and every time it was frustrating for Indiana and a huge bonus for Michigan. Third and 10 for the Wolverines, and we go to Jansen Vision. I talked about that Tyler Morris completion earlier in the game where he was deep and came back. If That's the, the scramble drill. If you're deep, you come back. If you're shallow, as the quarterback goes to you, you're going to go deep. So all of a sudden, you've got Colston Loveland right here, and he's going to come up and set up right in this area. And as J.J. McCarthy escapes this way, you're going to see J.J. direct traffic, but Colston Loveland ends up going deep. And I want, to, I want you to watch the defender as soon as J.J. escapes the pocket. 
all of a sudden, hey, he's covered, but Cole Sullivan follows directions. He's going deep. This defender has to honor the fact that J.J. could run for a first down here, so he comes up, and then what happens? Hey, he's caught in no man's land, and there's Colston Loveland, and he's going to go take it all the way to the end zone. Speed and the ability to take, the awareness to come back into the inside to get in the end zone was a great move by Colston Loveland. 54 yards. It was 28-7 Michigan at this point. Now, here's Jalen Harrell on a sack on a third down and 10 for a 13-yard loss, but a lot of guys contributed to this. They did, and Jalen Harrell, was, he came the long way, came around the edge, but was able to finally get home. And, and it, when you finally are able to pressure a quarterback, when they're down three, four scores, they know they're going to be throwing it. We know they're going to be throwing it. Pin your ears back and get after them. All right, here's some Blake Corum, good hard running, making people miss, well-blocked plays. Michigan started to get it going on the ground here with Blake. How many? I don't know how many times we're going to call a game where Blake Corum makes one, two, three, four guys miss on a single play. It's it's really nice to know that number two is in our backfield. And he'll run you over, too. <laughs> he will. J.J. goes 22 yards. Again, more plays with his feet. It's got Michigan knocking on the door. And that sets up a touchdown pass to Samaj Morgan. This didn't look like it was going to go anywhere, but not only – was he patient, let the block set up? He runs a guy over. He does. I mean, he gets out there, and I mentioned it during the broadcast, looked like he ran 20 yards in a five-yard box. By able to be patient, and then the aggressiveness of the offensive lineman to get out there, Colson Loveland to get on the action. Zach Zinner was out there. I mean, you had a lot of guys, Trevor Keegan out there, but it really came down to the desire of a, of a wide receiver wanting to get in the end zone. 35-7 the score at that point. Now Mike Barrett. Gets a sack, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery all in one play, filling up the stat line. Yeah, he came right up the gut, right in the face of the quarterback. Sack, fumble, he fell right on it. It's great to see a six-year guy be able to do that. That drive would stall, however, and James Turner comes on for the field goal. Michigan led it 38-7. to Here's a fourth and three for Indiana. Soresby, the ball's on the carpet, and Mason Graham. <laughs> I was going to say two hands on the ball, but one hand's covered by a club. No. <laughs> hey, Scoop, I know he wanted to score, and he wasn't going to go down, but he covers it up with the club. All right. Jack Tuttle in at quarterback now. Shows a little bootleg. Completes a pass to Roman Wilson. Yeah. Uh, hey, just being able to get outside. And if you, you to look at this play, you've got guys open at every single level, and he chooses with, you know, to go with Roman Wilson. Benjamin Hall, the freshman running back, goes 19 yards, bouncing this one outside. Has Michigan knocking on the door. Sneaky. Leading rusher in this game, Ben Hall, was able to come out and be very productive here when he got his opportunity. And that culminated in finally a Donovan Edwards touchdown from two yards out. The whole bench applauded this. Donovan's had a great attitude and finally gets in the end zone. Yeah, it was great to see number seven finally end up in the end zone. We saw earlier in the game, he wanted that opportunity right before half. Uh, it wasn't his time. 45-7, Michigan on top. Indiana tries to get something going. And the Michigan defense, ever opportunistic. Keon Sab comes up with the interception, and then the ball in his hands makes something out of it and gets Michigan into Indiana territory. Yeah, and that's two weeks in a row for a young player. It's 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 great confidence builder, and it's a great weapon for the defense. All right, fourth and goal, Jack Tuttle finds another freshman, Carmelo English, for his first career touchdown, and that led to the final score of 52-7. to seven. Michigan improves to 7-0. and oh. We'll hear from the head coach, Jim Harbaugh, next here on Inside Michigan Football. Our conversation with the coach is brought to you by Meyer. Coach, first of all, congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. As John Falk said, uh, never had a bad one. <laughs> That's a, I agree with that. Um, first quarter, uh, it was a slow start. What did you tell your team? Was there anything that you made adjustments to offensively and defensively to get things going in the second quarter? Well, well you know, Indiana, uh, I mean, they all, they're fighters. And, uh, and we're fighters, too. And our, our guys responded. Uh, yeah, definitely. After three drives, they had about 137 yards, and, and we had minus eight. Uh, but then we responded on our third drive and, um, and didn't look back. Uh, just a tremendous game by, uh, by just about everybody. And I'm, I'm still processing you know, some, of the, some of the young, young guys that uh, got in and, and did so well. Obviously, Samaj Morgan. Frederick Moore is an elite punt return blocker. It was great to see the special teams break out on that uh, long punt return and the uh, kickoff return. And turnovers, they were the story tonight, too. Yeah. Uh, Rod Moore started things off, but you had two fumble recoveries, and uh, Mason Graham picked one up and rumbled for about 12 yards. Mason Graham, I mean, he's, just, he's just always there in the right place at the right time, and, and uh, how he manipulated 
you know, picking that ball up with, with the club is, is pretty cool, too. That legend grows. Uh, it, it does continue to grow. And J.J., um, you know, the playmaking ability, what did you see from J.J. out there? Well, he's, he's really becoming, a, you know, such a great uh, escape artist and, and, and managing the pocket, you know, better uh, is, is gotten really good, too. He's been patient there, uh, keeping his eyes downfield. But, uh, you know, he's just he's a special player. I mean, we can sing Jolly Goodfellow to him after, after every game in the locker room. So who got it today? Mike Barrett and Samaj Morgan. Okay. Uh, yeah, and and uh, and all the Indiana guys, you know, Mike Hart, the Mallorys, and uh, <clears throat> Jack Tuttle, AJ Barner. You know, it's a it's a it's a dynamic. You know, when uh, you're you're playing your former teammates, I mean, your your brothers. I mean, they love each other, but I mean, they're out there scrapping. Uh, you could you could see it, and it it means a lot. I, I can't explain it really. I mean, I lost. Uh, I, I never wanted to win a game more than against my own brother, and. Uh, and then when he won, you know, you think, uh, yes, why would you, you think you'd want him to win, you know, like <laughs> more than other. Works. It's not the way it works, and it's just, it's the same, it's the same dynamic. So, really happy for them. Jack Tuttle uh, getting that touchdown pass, and and so many guys played good. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it, it's a great feeling of of responding. You know, I mean, the guys, uh, uh, you know, really really fought hard. Any message to the guys about the next week's opponent? State week, uh, and they were right on it. I mean, we uh, we sung the victors and a couple jolly good fellows, and then uh, we're on the state right now. Well, congratulations, Coach. Thank you, John. Coach seems like he's in such a good mood, and a lot of this has to do with this team's unselfishness. It is. You know, when you talk to these guys and these players, they're always talking about, hey, we're happy for Donovan Edwards to get in the end zone. We're happy for Roman Wilson, Blake Corum, this defense, the number of sacks that they're able to produce. But I think what he's most happy about is the fact that they're 7-0. Yeah, sure. And Michigan State is coming up next. We'll preview the Spartans here on Inside Michigan Football. Best week, man. It's always, always a great week, man. Always the energy's high. Everybody's ready. Love, love robbery games. Our Elro Steel Man of the Week is Jalen Harrell. The senior defensive end picked up a pair of sacks and forced a fumble to help spearhead a Michigan defense that smothered the Hoosiers and held them to 66 yards in the second half. Harrell now has four and a half tackles for loss. Three and a half of those are QB sacks. Coach Mint preached all week. It was a training camp game, basically meaning like, you know, just do what we got to do, execute our, uh, our four pillars and what we do best. So we know whatever, threw at, whatever they threw at us, uh, we're going to be able to um, handle it. For the first time since 1973, no team has scored more than 10 points against the Wolverines through the first seven games. They've been especially stout coming out of halftime. Michigan has allowed only 10 first downs in the third quarter all year and they've kept all seven foes under 70 yards in the third stanza. Getting that time in the, in the uh, locker room at halftime, just kind of coming together, uh, ironing out all the small details, being able to talk to all of the guys in the box, all the coaches, and just, you know, making those adjustments. I feel like uh, it's just kind of how it ends up playing out. I think we uh, kind of know what we have to do and just going out there and just executing. As the Wolverines keep snapping off wins, they're etching themselves in the record books. 19 consecutive Big Ten wins, that ties a program record. 20 consecutive wins at the Big House, the longest such streak in over two decades, and they've now won 22 consecutive regular season games, tied for the fourth longest streak in program history. For Inside Michigan Football, I'm Ed Kingerski. So Michigan goes on the road again next week. Rivalry game, Paul Bunyan on the line against Michigan State. And Spartans made a change at quarterback on Saturday and seemed to have some success. Yeah, they did. They were up big against Rutgers, ended up not winning the game. But when you are able to start looking at some things where, hey, we could build upon something, they had some things today that they're able to build upon. Rivalry games sometimes make somebody go all superhuman. You just never know. You never know. Um, but what I do know is that this Michigan team whether it's 21, 22, or this year, they love going into enemy territory and taking over an environment, and I can't wait for it to happen in East Lansing. All right, that is next week on Inside Michigan Football. We'll take a look back at the game against the Spartans. We'll see you then. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2023 Michigan football season and proud supporter of thousands of local sports teams across the Midwest.